I am Kurt Hughes. This is my Lunar Lander dwelling house in Beverly, Washington. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is a tasty, low-carb, sugar grain, and gluten-free cereal. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use promo code FLORB at checkout to get $5 off any order. And remember to subscribe. I got my degree in architecture in 79. I was working in uh, downtown high-rise design, and I took a side turn because when I was in architecture school, I built my first boat, and I sailed it the week I graduated. And I sort of got diverted after a couple of years doing architecture into doing boat design. I saw tiny houses being built, and they were stick-built, and so they were weak and heavy. And so I was talking to an epoxy manufacturer and I said, you know, why don't I do a tiny house like a boat? And he said, yeah, let's do it. And so uh, this is built like a boat, but I decided to make it look like the Lunar Lander because I thought that was cool. And it was from an era when anything was possible. First, I built a model of the Lunar Lander to see what it had. And then I built a 3D model of this on my computer. The original Lunar Lander wasn't very habitable, but this had to be habitable. And so it looks different than the original lunar lander. Originally, it was going to be smaller than it is now. The building code required it to be bigger, and uh, people are usually impressed how large it is on the inside compared to how it looks on the outside. It's built with SIP panels, so there's structural insulation foam in the middle, and then a four millimeter plywood vacuum bag to both sides, and then all coated with epoxy. And then those, in turn, are held together with biaxial roving. And so there's no framing in it, but it's stronger than a framed house. I see that I submitted the plans 10 years ago, but it's been about five years of work. But I enjoy it so much, I come out here whenever I can. This is my Lunar Lander dwelling. It's built using foam glass, foam plywood SIP panels that are epoxy coated and epoxy bonds the parts together with biaxial roving, which is the same strength as A36 steel. Most SIP panels that you can buy use wafer board or cheap plywood. Uh, this is the most expensive plywood you can buy. It's Asian Okume. Wanted to make sure that it had high quality. This is an original prototype, so the walls are actually thicker than this. But this is an original prototype before I knew I would have to build uh, three inch walls. I'm tied into utilities, yeah. It's the cheapest electric in the country, so might as well take advantage of it. But also now that we're standing here, there's a glow pebble so that at night, the walkway is lit up with glow pebbles. And then solar powered footlights for the uh, stairway. So they absorb energy all day and shine a light all night. The stair stringers are kind of interesting. When I originally bought the steel beams, I thought, well, they'd look solid. And I wanted more of a NASA technological look. And I happen to notice that my neighbor has a, a plasma cutter where he cuts Old West truck grills out and sells them. And so my neighbor with the plasma cutter cut that. And there's the QR codes so that if people come out here and go, what the hell is this? Then they can find out with the QR code. Here's the uh, steel legs. I wanted to use steel so that uh, it would be a heavy anchor so it wouldn't blow away as much. And then uh, concrete pads, that's the extent of the foundation. Most of my architect friends freak out when they realize there's no foundation. There's often 100 mile an hour winds. This here's a hold down cable. It's like a sailboat rigging with a shroud on a sailboat. Keeps the mast from tipping over, and uh, this keeps the lunar lander from tipping over. It's supposed to tip over at 80 miles an hour wind. And since we get 100, then uh, use this. Captain Nemo's window wasn't an original lunar lander, but I had to have it here for the views of the river. So it's just like in 20,000 leagues under the sea where Captain Nemo would retire to his uh, window. There's the solar, just one panel. It'll have a battery. I haven't figured out what to do with the battery yet, but there's the weather center and it goes to, to an information panel on the inside. I think that's about it. And it has a uh, biometric door lock. I wanted to make the doors the same thickness as the walls for better insulation value, but the uh, door hardware wouldn't fit. So I had to carve out some things that look like airplane doors. 
in those two weeks. I wanted a clear roof to see the uh, stars through and I built a, a plywood dome in Wenatchee when I was 21. So I have some experience with them and uh, my brother welded it together and I painted it and there it is. Originally, I was gonna have the bed suspended from the top, but the building department wouldn't allow that. So uh, this was the only place left for it. So originally that was gonna be a lounging pit it was just like four or five feet down, but uh, no code requires seven feet. And it's got a complete uh, kitchen, refrigerator, microwave, coffee, oven, cooktop. Everything in the house runs on electric. And because it's built so efficiently, the bills are never more than $25 a month. It's got a city water, color for the water temperature. It's my carbon fiber countertop, which doesn't need to be strong, but it looked cool and it had some extra carbon fiber. Here's a model that my daughter made off of my 3D model. Gave it to me for Christmas. So she had it 3D printed. Here's the deck. And uh, this is a sit panel also. That's only five eighths of an inch thick plywood holding the deck here. And it's plenty strong because it's 10,000 PSI Asian plywood. And something I never thought about, of course, to get up on the roof, I would need this. That wasn't in the plans. And then here's the ship's ladder. So it doesn't actually touch the bottom. So it's cantilevered off of a uh, this joint here, which is why it has to have carbon fiber in it, so, so it's extra strong. Originally, it was going to be, like I said, a lounging pit, and so it's sloped towards the middle. Futon bed. Here's the air to air. When it blows the warm air out, it passes through the cold air coming in through a grid, and so it heats the cold air coming in, and so then you don't have a net loss of heat in the winter. And then uh, closet spaces. This, this one is tools. Um, this one is the electrical panel. Then it has a cove light here, which I really like the uh, ambience of that. Here's the weather center. There's the uh, outside temperature, percentage of rainfall, inside temperature. Yeah, this is an Accurite, and I highly recommend it. Here's the uh, nautical looking seats table from my first boat had it kicking around in the garage and I said you know I have a place for that so uh, there it is have a uh, pads in case gravity disappears and you float up you don't hit your head fire extinguisher sink and then here's the bathroom with the uh, Japanese Toto toilet it's originally intended to be an inside the wall but I thought it looked so cool and red so I stuck it on the face of the wall and uh, really pleased with it. And then inside the shower, the shower changes color with the temperature. So when you first turn it on, it's blue and cold and then it turns green and warms up and then at 45 Celsius, it becomes red. And so that's a lot of fun. You can look out the window. There's a boat port. Look out the window and see the uh, river when you're taking a shower. It's come out as I expected. There's probably a lot of things that um, I would have done slightly differently looking back. When I was gluing the floor together, it took a little longer than I expected and the epoxy started to set up. So I had to slam it together and it wasn't quite right. I just plodded along till I got it done. Actually, I've made a line of, of tiny houses, which I'll be releasing sometime soon, but I could see a whole village of these, like with, with the gorge, there's an amphitheater up the road and not enough places for people to stay. And so that'd be a great village <laughs> of tiny houses, spaceships. There's, there's all kinds of things you can do and still make it look like a spaceship. And I, th I think that's important, it's fun. 
When I started eating a low carb diet, I stopped eating cereal and I missed it. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented. My favorite flavor is actually a mix, a two to one ratio of cocoa, peanut butter, and frosted mixed. Seriously, it reminds me of what I used to eat as a kid. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own variety box and use my code FLOOR for $5 off. You can choose from the best selling flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, maple waffle, blueberry and cinnamon but wait magic spoon is now adding honey nut to their permanent collection so be sure to add honey nut to your custom box and try it out and magic spoon is so confident in their product it's backed by a hundred percent happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked so click the link below and use code floor for five dollars off and go to magicspoon.com forward slash floor to save five dollars off your order today and be sure to add the new honey nut to your custom box box. Also, for my Canadian and British fans, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the UK. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.